So very early on, I told everybody on my team, if you've got the opportunity, look at each other and have the conversation. That is Rosina Samadani, a longtime friend who was my second engagement manager at McKinsey way back in 2001 and, and who provided me with invaluable advice when I was starting out as an independent consultant a decade ago. For a dozen years, Rosina ran a very successful boutique consulting firm, Capella Advisors, after she left the firm. Uh, she's also the founder of Truth on Call, which provides fast turnaround quantitative market research for the healthcare industry. She also founded Doc News, which was acquired by American Medical Communications and relaunched as DocWire. Since 2015, Rosina has been the CEO of Oculogica, an innovative medical device company that is building devices that use eye tracking technology to detect traumatic brain injury. You can learn more about Oculogica at www.oculogica.com, and there's a link in the show notes. Rosina's team members all work remotely, and in this short episode, we discuss the tools her team uses to stay connected, in particular, Zoom and Slack. If you visit the website for our show at umbrex.com slash unleashed, you can sign up to receive our weekly Unleashed email, which includes a transcript of every episode, uh, including consulting tips and book recommendations. Thanks for listening. Hello, Rosina. Welcome to the show. Hi, Will. Thank you so much for joining, Rosina. You and I go back, I don't know, 15, 18 years, something like that. You were, I think, my second engagement manager at the firm when I was a business analyst, so it's awesome having you on the show. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. And you're right, we do go back a long way. <laughs> um, so I, today, we're, I don't think we're going to, uh, we, well, maybe at the end, if we have some time, we could talk about your work as an independent professional, which you did for a number of years. So you really were the one who taught me and got me you know, started on independent consulting and helped show me the ropes. But today, I want to talk about um, the company that you're running and how you kind of run distributed um, distributed team. So tell, tell us a little bit about Oculogica. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited about what you're doing. Uh, Oculogica is a medical device startup in the neurodiagnostic space. And the first indication that we are going after is concussion. So how do people, so, so what's that mean? So how neurodiagnostic, how are concussions diagnosed today? So that's actually a very good question because it's actually pretty tough to diagnose a concussion today. It's a pretty subjective diagnosis. If you go into a sports medicine clinic or the emergency room, it really depends on the doctor that you see, which clinic you go into, and uh, you know what the setting is. Within the ER, depending on the doctor, you could get assessed a little bit differently. Sometimes you'll get a head CT scan. That's actually not a diagnostic for concussion. In the sports medicine clinic, you may get a questionnaire. Uh, all of these things are pretty subjective. We've developed a test that is eye tracking based and baseline free and objective. And baseline free, what, what does that mean? That means that you don't have to have done it to the person you know, when they were, before they got hit in the head. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's amazing. So right now, like if an NFL player gets hit, um, you know, gets a concussion, it, it's hard to say like medically before your tool if it was like a concussion or they just got hit pretty hard. Um, it it really depends on how the, the person assesses them. The NFL has a concussion protocol. They go through a standardized test that I think all of the NFL teams uh, go through. Uh, they have the same test for each of the um, each of the physicians that they administer, uh, but even that test requires a baseline test. So before the season begins, they um, you know they conduct a baseline. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So we have some uh, some basic idea of of Oculogica now. Um, yeah. And if people wanted to learn more about the company. Go to Oculogica.com. They can go to Oculogica.com. And one important thing to realize about our company is that we are going through the FDA process. Awesome. So 
now I, I really want you on the show because I, I know you're running a kind of a firm that is a truly modern enterprise and that you're, you know, you're all your team members are, are remote, right? So talk to us about like where your folks sit. And then I really want to dive into the tools that you're using to kind of work together as a team. Okay. Fantastic. Would love to. So our team members sit all the way across the country. Uh, we're distributed. We're, we've got team members in San Francisco, um, various parts of uh, Minneapolis, uh, sorry, Minnesota, um, Wisconsin, uh, and then uh, different parts of New York, uh, actually both in Manhattan, but in different locations in Manhattan. So we have six full-time team members. We obviously also work with uh, contractors for specific areas. And uh, we we work together every single day. We have to be in very close contact and in touch with each other. Uh, because we are a medical device, we're running clinical trials, we've got compliance uh, concerns, we have to do things um, in a certain manner. Uh, and so we do need to be in, in very close touch with each other. So that's tough when you're all sitting in different time zones and, and just different physical locations. What are the tools that you use to uh, stay together as a team? So we use quite a few tools. Um, one of them is Zoom. And this is an idea that I got. Actually, we were at uh, we were a part of an accelerator at Stanford called Stardex. And several of the engineering teams that were part of startups you know, really with a team within the broader team, um, they had something that they called Scrum. And I think it's a term that comes from rugby where you kind of all gather and then you go out and do what you're supposed to do. And the idea of Scrum is that everybody says fairly quickly what they're working on that day. And we decided uh, in our company to do that on a daily basis, but across the entire company, because at that time there were only five of us, now there's six. And we really wanted to make sure that we were staying in touch and that everybody knew what was going on uh, with the entire company, but also what other people were working on. So every morning now we get on what we call, we actually even call it Scrum. Uh, it's at a, the same time every single day. We do it via Zoom. Uh, we have modified Scrum a little bit. We go through a pretty organized, a very organized Excel spreadsheet, and it lists the area, the topic. We update the notes. We know who is working on this. Um, and then we highlight actually in yellow the things that we're doing on that day. So can you, I mean, maybe sanitize a little bit, but give us, sure. give us your, like if you were, you know, giving your scrum pitch for the day, what, what would it, what would it sound like? So we would, uh, we've got all the different categories. So one of them is FDA concussion, understandably. And let's say we have something due to FDA uh, and it's actually due this week. That will probably be highlighted in yellow because we're working on it that day. Um, the topic will be FDA concussion. There will be some sort of specific activity so that everybody really understands exactly what it is. Maybe it's writing up the memo, drafting the memo. And we say, okay, somebody has the master and they're going to be handing it off to this person today. And we put that in the notes and that's something that we type in new and refresh from the day before. And then we've got columns for each of the people. We've got their initials, uh, actually just the first name uh, initial because there's not that many of us. And there's X's in the boxes as to who is doing what. And that's also very nice because you can go back to the Excel spreadsheet for Scrum and you can identify who is uh, what, what you're supposed to be working on that day. So you mentioned Zoom. Let's talk about that in a little bit more detail for people who haven't used it. Video conference tool. Uh, what do you like about it? Why did you choose Zoom versus you know, some of the other uh, video conference tool, tools out there? Yeah, Zoom is um, it's very easy. It's very accessible. Uh, it's It was extremely easy for us to ad adopt. Um, it seems a little bit more um, simple to use for us uh, than WebEx or uh, Google. Google requires people to have a Gmail address. So it just seemed very restrictive and 
honestly a little invasive uh, because it is Google. Um, and uh, WebEx w was, uh, it, it felt sort of large company and, uh, and you know, a little bit corporate. Um, and so Zoom just felt much more our personality. Uh, you click on it, it works. Um, you know, honestly, we, we really love it. Yeah, I, I use Zoom as well. And uh, what I like is with WebEx, you know, you always have to like create an account or it takes like forever yeah. to download the stuff for someone who doesn't have an account. Or Zoom, you just boom, send someone a link and it almost always works. They can do it on their phone, iPad, click on a computer. It doesn't matter if you're using Chrome or Explorer or Mac or IBM. Uh, you just click on it and then, you know, everybody pops up. And how is it different doing a, for you doing a phone call versus a video conference? Is, is it, is it, like really make a difference. It's, when you it's really it. night and day. Uh, so very early on, I told everybody on my team, if you've got the opportunity, look at each other and have the conversation rather than, um, you know, not you know, basically doing it by phone. And so uh, that's, you know, that's what we, you know, that's what we try to do. Every opportunity that we have, we try to um, do the conversation via Zoom. And we just ping the other person actually on Slack and say, should we hop on Zoom? And every one of us has their own Zoom room. So we can have multiple one-on-one -on -one conversations going on all the time. Hmm. And uh, so and how, what does that mean? Each, each of you have a Zoom room. I haven't used that feature. I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. So uh, when you sign up for an account for Zoom with Zoom, you get a little Zoom number. That's actually your room. Oh, okay, gotcha. And so, yeah, so you actually do have a Zoom room. Everyone on my team has their own account, and we and they're actually they're I think they're free because I think up to thirty minutes it's it's free. My account is actually we pay for it because we do go longer and we've got a, a larger group, um, and uh, you know we need to conduct that for a bit longer sometimes. Uh, conduct those Zoom sessions for a bit longer, uh, but that's what we mean. So. We'll say hop on Joel, Joel's Zoom, or yeah. you know, do you want to hop on my Zoom? That type of thing. So it's not just the scheduled Scrum or scheduled meetings, but you also use it for impromptu. Hey, let's let's talk, and rather than doing a phone call, yes, you know, actually face yeah. to face. We never do phone calls. I think it's uh, I mean, maybe one in a month we do a phone call. Um, we will do a conference call with entities that can't use Zoom. Um, there are some hospitals and uh, some government agencies, they can't use video conference. And so we'll set up a conference call um, in those cases. Uh, for our internal team discussions, it's always Zoom. That's our default. And it, it's it's phenomenal. It makes a huge difference to be able to see somebody. Hmm. So Zoom, you mentioned Slack. How do you use Slack and what other tools do you use? So Slack is um, a messaging tool. I, I'm assuming people are pretty familiar with it. It's a way to exchange messages very quickly. It has cut down our email. I mean, we haven't used email only uh, without Slack for several years now. Slack just allows you to quickly ping somebody or a group of people on a particular topic um, and get everybody's input. They can even, you know, put a thumbs up, thumbs down, smiley face, that type of thing you know, take a look at it when you get a chance. And that way he doesn't have to have an email for it. Uh, so he doesn't get like a hundred emails um, and he can respond to me right away with a, sure, got it. That's something that you can just message each other with. You don't need to send an email. It really is, it changes, uh, you know, the, the email workload by an enormous amount. What other tools are you using beyond um, beyond Slack and Zoom? Have you found? Yes. Uh, so other? we've we were using Dropbox. We we shifted over to Box because it's HIPAA compliant, ah. um, and we needed a HIPAA compliant tool because mm -hmm. we're in the medical industry. Uh, and then our engineers use Trello. We mm -hmm. actually tried to use Trello uh, much more extensively across the entire team, and we quickly abandoned it. It was too cumbersome and uh, really just didn't suit the way that we were maintaining things. That's why we just use the Excel spreadsheet for our daily scrum. Um, but our engineers do use Trello and they've given access to uh, me, for example, to it so that I can see what's going on, but I don't interfere with their Trello board. <laughs> and, and for folks that haven't used Trello, just kind of describe the 
the software it, and, and how it's you use as, it? Yeah, sure. So it's as if you've got a big bulletin board and you've got a project. Um, so let's say it's the next generation of your software. And then you've got the sub activities for that project on different post-it notes. And under those sub activities, you've got a list of things that you're going to do. That's Trello. And you can move these things around. You can tick things off. You can assign it to people, that type of thing. Cool. So you're running on Zoom, Slack, Trello, any other tools? Box. Box is critical for us. Box for your um, documents. Yeah, we don't uh, keep our documents on our own computers. Everything's in Box. Uh, for some of those are for compliance reasons. You know, we need to have the HIPAA compliance and make sure that you know, the appropriate people have access or don't have access mm-hmm. to particular files. And then also it helps us maintain a master. So, you know, from McKinsey days that there's this fantastic term that really helps uh, with document management called having the master. And when you hand off the master, we always do it via box. It's not via email. It's not via any other way. The protocol uh, in our tiny little company is to always hand off the master via box so that it can't, that there's no confusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so important. You don't want to be editing like the third third most recent version and then you're like, (laughs) never sort it out. Yeah. Uh, I taught I taught my team the concept of master really <laughs> early on. I think it's just a you know it's obviously there's some really helpful tools that you learn at McKinsey. <laughs> so with with Zoom, Slack, Box, and Trello, um, uh, and, and any other kind of personal apps or tools that that you use personally, maybe the whole team isn't using, but that you find super helpful. And well, I personally use Wonderlist, um, and I actually. This is something that I learned from you um, is to outsource activities, um, even in your personal life, to folks that can help you. So I finally got a personal assistant and she and I use Wonderlist and we we basically share a list. I put things on the list and then she uh, checks them off as she does them or she sends me a message or, you know, we exchange a photograph about it. It's been huge. I my my reading has gone up because she can take books to the library and get <laughs> books from the library for me. Um, and my groceries and the drugstore dry cleaning. I feel a lot more relaxed because I've got this wonder list. And if something's on my mind, I just put it on there. And I'm not worried about waking her up in the middle of the night um, by sending a text. I just you know she it's it's on the wonder list and she's going to see it and she's going to take care of it. It's phenomenal. Well, you've given me some ideas, Rosina, and oh, really? Yeah, okay, this is That's great. amazing awesome. because you're the guru of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, this this was great. Thank you so much. So, um, so folks who are interested in seeing what you're doing can visit archaeological.com to see the latest news. We'll include a note on that in the show notes. So, thanks for sharing how you're managing a remote firm, a true modern company. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of Unleashed, the show that explores how to thrive as an independent professional. Unleashed is sponsored by Umbrex, the world's first global community of top-tier independent management consultants. The mission of Umbrex is to create opportunities for independent management consultants to meet, share lessons learned, and collaborate. I'd love to get your feedback and hear any questions that you'd like to see us answer on this show. You can email me at unleashed at umbrex.com. That's U-M-B-R-E-X.com. If you found anything on the show helpful, it would be a real gift if you would let a friend know about the show and take a minute to leave a review on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And if you subscribe, our show will get delivered to your device every Monday. Our audio engineer is Dave Nelson. Our theme song was composed by Gary Negbauer, and I'm your host, Will Bachman. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.